morning I'm going to share just one half of one passage in the Bible uh, out of the book of Psalms and it's found in Psalm chapter 9 and we're reading from verse 10a and it says these words, and those who know your name will put their trust in you. When those who know your name will put your, their trust in you. As we journey through the book of Psalms is that we see so many different names for God. But not only are there names for God, there are also descriptors of His name. There's descriptions of who He is, His nature and His character, that He is our shield and He is our refuge. He's our fortress. He is light. He's salvation. He's a father to the fatherless. He's a defender to the widows. Is that He is a God that would come and lift our head up high. Is that He is a God who can be trusted in. And so there are different names of God, but there are also descriptions of His name. And the psalmist is saying here, if you and I know the depth of His name, if you and I know the breadth of His name, is that then we can put our trust in Him. And so the title of my message this morning is the name above every other name. Who knows that there is a name that is above every other name? Whatever name has been declared over you, that there is a name that's greater and the name is Jesus. And so names have power, is that names give you and I access that we wouldn't normally have access to. Uh, Over the last number of weeks, I have attended two significant and major sporting events. One being the Olympic Games, and the other one being uh, my grandchild's first running race at school. Significant events in my life, like... And I have been there, no matter how big it was, I have been cheering on the athletes, I have been encouraging them on. And so this morning, I've just got a clip that you can join with me. Uh, I can't show Olympic clip because of broadcasting rights. We don't want a stream coming down uh, today. We just have a look at this clip. Come on, Lanny. Go, Lanny. Go, 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 go. There is definitely no participation ribbon there. That's first place. That's first place. Like, she is a winner right there. But the other event was the, was the Olympics, and I found myself at the swimming there. Uh, I want to acknowledge all of our families here who were involved in the Olympic Games. Like, seriously, we, we rate pretty high. Like, I know the Gorry family's all the way up the back there, the, that Katrina has been a member of the... Uh, of oh, this football program for years and years is that Andy Dean was sitting right here. One of his family members got a bronze medal in the BM, uh, BMX riding there. We've got swimmers that are getting gold and silver medals and bronze medals there. It, it, we're attached to something significant, eh? Like, really, it's serious. Like, we've got Olympia. Like, out of 8.1 billion people, We've got people that hold medals from the Olympic Games. Wait, 8.1 billion, that's significant, eh? And so I found myself getting into places that, that I never really ever expected or thought I could get there, but names give you and I access. And so when Elijah was coming out for his medal presentation, I was sitting in some seats that were a little bit further back, and I just had this little bit of boldness about me as I, I wonder if I, how close I could get to this presentation. And so I, I went down the front and I was stopped by the security guards and the security guard says, you can't come any further, but who knows names give you and I access. And so I said to that security guard there that, well, I am Elijah Winnington's godfather and he's coming out for a medal presentation very shortly. And he simply said, come on through. <laughs> I found myself on the front row. Some people thought I was an official, like (laughs) on the front row. Is that after that, Ariane Titmus, you know, wins her gold medal. I'm sitting back again. I thought, well, it worked once. (laughs) Maybe we could give it a go a second time. So I went down to the same security guard and he was like, no, you can't come any further. I said, well, Ariane Titmus is coming out here shortly. She is a gold medalist and I am her pastor. <laughs> he had no idea what pastor was. <laughs> and so I thought the depth of my French from grade eight, I'm going to go with priest. I'm going to go with Pret. Well, I am her Pret. And he was like, you are her priest? Come on through. <laughs> like... I got access. 
access to places and to people that I should never have had access to, but because I knew a name, because I knew one of these names, is it gave me access. If you know the name that's above every other name, is you are gonna get access into places and into promises and into His power that you've never experienced before. If you have a look at these photos, there's a great difference in the quality of these photos. Like the outer two, I am really, really close. At my, daughter, my granddaughter's running race, there was no chance I was getting any access. They didn't care who I was. There was no way I was gonna get past that rope there. And I appreciate that. I appreciate the safety of my grandchildren right there. Yes, Mr. Jacobs, it's all good. I, I do. But that was like a long, it was like my iPhone 6 or something like that I've got. And I took a long shot of her. Is you know what, but when you and I know the name that will give us access, if you know the name that's above every other name, is that you are going to get into places and get into situations where all of heaven is for you and is with me, with you. And so here the Psalmist David is saying that to the degree that you know the name of God, the names of God is to same degree that access is going to be given to you and that you'll then be in a position where you can fully trust in Him. If, if you don't know so someone's name, then you can't really trust them. You're not in a position to trust them. Not even necessarily a, a good report of someone's reputation. Are you going to completely trust that person? But it's out of knowing their name over a duration of time where there is consistency there is that when you and I know the name that's consistent and is all knowing, is all powerful, then we can put our trust in that name. And so this morning, is that we are going to look at some of the Hebrew names for God throughout the Old Testament. There are so many different names for God which give you and I a picture of not only who He is, but, who, but what is available for you and I, of who you and I actually are in the world where there is so much confusion around identity and the status of individuals, I know this in life is that when we know who God is, it's only then can we know who truly we are. If you know the depth of who God is, then you can truly know the depth of what He has placed inside of you. I remember growing up in a house, household of five boys there. And Pastor Brian was always problematic out of those five boys. <laughs> But I, I knew and we knew the temperature of our house according to the names that our mother would call us. And so if she called out Michael or Brian, we knew that everything was sweet. But as soon as she called out Brian Francis and Michael Joseph, we knew that there was a problem. <laughs> We knew that there's something needed to be addressed, that there is a problem that has arisen, a situation has arisen that we need to find a solution to this. We need to confront the issue there. And here God is saying that when you're in a place of trouble, when you're in a place of concern, would you use my full name? Because my full name is not a thing that's going to get you into trouble. My full name is going to give you the access to His power and to His presence that He will navigate and He will walk with you all the days of your life. And so this morning, I'm going to put up a couple of slides here. You can take out your phone and take some screenshots because I'm not going to go through all of these names. Scholars can't agree as to how many names for God are in the Word of God. I, I don't know. Some say 60, some say 100. Like, how can we be so wrong? But there's lots of names given to God and even more descriptions of His name. And so some of these, the first one, YHWH, is that God, Moses goes to God and says, hey God, who do I say to the people that I am? And he comes back and says, well, let's let them know I am who I am. If you can understand that, come and let me know after service. But he is all encompassing. He is self-sufficient. He has no beginning. He has no end. He is a God who is present, God who is accessible. There's standalone names. There's Jehovah, which is a combination of Yahweh and Adonai. Is a, a Yahweh name mixed with the, uh, the vows of Adonai. 
uh, there. And then we have other L names, which are meaning the high names of God. And then we go into the Jehovah names of God. If we just keep going through those slides, that would be great, guys. And you can just take some photos of those names. And these names give you an eye descriptors as to who God is to each and every one of us. That he is El Roy. He's a God who sees. Is this morning is that God knows you and God sees you in the very best of times and also in the very challenging of times. And so why are there so many different names of God? There are so many different names because He has so much, so many different facets of who He is, of His nature and His character. It's not just contained in Father, but it's contained in all of these different names. Is that you and I get a picture of who you and I can become and what God can accomplish in our lives because of the power that's in His name is that I found in life that we all have multiple names. You, you are known by a number of names and different names to different groups of people. So I jotted down some of the names that I am known by. Like I am known as Michael Joseph Mulherrod. I, I am known as Michael. Pastor Mark calls me Michael. He, him and my mum are the other one, only ones that call me Michael. The majority of you, maybe because I'm in trouble. No, it's not that. Uh, the majority would you know would know me as Mike? Is my brothers know me as Mick? Is that others would know me as Mully? There's a few rebellious young adults in our community that know me as P Money. <laughs> and they're really, really happy with me if I approve their purchase order, and they're really, really sad with me if I don't approve their purchase order. P Money. There's others that know me as Holiday Mike, others that would know me as Dad. There's three young little grandkids that know me as Moots. There's one person that knows me as husband, I hope. <laughs> and so we all have a multitude of different names, but not everyone knows me according to all of those names. There's only three that know me truly as Moose. As the grandfather, there are a bunch of you that know me as Holiday Mike. There is so many of you that know me as Mike. But when it comes to the names of God, God is saying, I am giving you access to all of my names. There's not one name that that I call myself by that you do not have total access to. Two is that you don't know me as Holiday Mike, but I can know every facet of God. There's no restrictions. There's no entry requirements to know the bigness and the fullness of the names of God. And when we know His names, we can fully put our trust and our confidence in Him. And so this morning, I wanna give you a couple of thoughts here. The first thought is this, the names of God enable you and I to fully know Him. To fully know God, you must know the depth and the width and the height of His names and what it means. Psalm 8 and verse 1 says, O Lord our God, how excellent is Your name in all of the earth. Psalm 20 and verse 7 is that some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we... We will remember the name of the Lord. I'm not trusting in something physical. I am trusting in a name that's above every other name. Romans 10 and verse 13. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Have you ever called on His name and had that response that has come? You've called upon the name that's above every other name and He has not withheld Himself, but He has freely given Himself to you. Would you call upon the name that's above every other name? See, knowing someone's name is the very first step to being in relationship with them. If you do not know someone's name, well, then you're not really in relationship with them in our vernacular in Australia, is mate does not represent a depth of relationship. It merely represents that we've forgotten that person's name (laughs) and we cover it with a mate. Is that We've got to get beyond the mate level. Is that God is not my mate. No, He is my Saviour. Is that I've got to know the names and the depth of His names. His names are an invitation for you and I to get to know Him deeper and better. And that's why He has so many names. His names give you and I access. It's simply like 
Day after day, God opens a door and invites us into a new realm of who he is and he opens another door that would see another depth of him. Would you just see these doors opening for your life and walking into the depth of relationship that God has designed for each and every one of us? Would you, would you, put your, would you know the name of God so that you can put your trust in him? Is that these are not names, they are simply invitations to come to know him better. And so in these names, God say, hey, would you come, would you come, would you come? You might know me as creator, but I'm more than creator. <laughs> you might not know me as El Shaddai, but I'm also Elohim. As you you know, might know me as Jehovah Shema, but I am so much more than that. I, you might know me as shepherd, but I am so much more than just a shepherd, but I want to be a shepherd to you and I, I will make you lie down in green pastures and I'll lead you by the river there. And as you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you're not going to fear any evil. I'm going to restore you. Your cup's going to run over. I'm going to prepare a, ta a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Is there is so much more to God. Yes. Well, you get to know the fullness of who He is. My second thought this morning is, is that trust flows from knowing the names of God. And those who know your name will put their trust in you. I found that this is a trust is the place where you can be vulnerable without any judgment. Trust is that place where you can be vulnerable where there's no judgment at the relationship between spouses is that place of trust where I can be completely vulnerable with Nadine and there is no judgment. Trust is that place with God where you can be completely vulnerable and there's no judgment. Wow. There's, nothing, there's no one like Him. There's no other God like Him. That you and I are called to be vulnerable. We, we, is it, we are naked, the Scriptures say, in front of Him. He knows everything that's going on, but yet we can come in this heart of vulnerability and there is no judgment, there is no shame, there is no condemnation. Is that God in one of those names is gonna come and meet you at the place of your great need there. And so I found in life is that trust is a function or an element of three things. And these three things must be in existence in order for you and I to trust someone. The first one is, is that they must be of outstanding character. That they have got to be competent in what they do. And thirdly, they must also be consistent. If you need your car fixed this week, don't bring it to me. You might think I'm outstanding in character, but I'm definitely not com competent in fixing your car. But as I've looked at the nature of God is that He is perfect in character, He is perfect in competency and He is always, always consistent. You, you can trust God this morning. You can trust Him. He is perfect in character. One of His names, He's, he's Creator. He's eternal. He's three persons in one. He's self-sufficient. He's holy, He's merciful, He's righteous. He's full of joy, He is peace. He's gracious today. Well, what He is outstanding in character. Yeah. It is perfect. Is that the angels would enthrone, go around His throne, declaring holy, 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 holy is the Lord. The, another meaning for this word holy is different. And every time they're, they're, they're observing the nature and the characteristic of God, they're declaring, that's different and I'm seeing something different and He's different and He's different. Would you and I get to know the names of God and see that He's different in this situation to what He is in that situation? So not only is He perfect in character, He is completely competent. Look at yourself. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Is that God would take the, the dust of the ground and shape and form mankind, breathe the breath of life into Him, that He would become a living being naturally and that it also could come alive spiritually. Is that God is so competent. Look, look at the structure of your, you know, your, your, your systems in your body, the respiratory systems in your body, the different organs. And scientists have been studying the brain for, for decades and decades and not, never got to the depth of it. Why? Because God is so, so competent. 
when Job was having a conversation with God and God just declaring who he is, he says to Job, Job, are you able to say to the tides that this is your boundary line, you will not come any further to that? Is how, how precise is God that He set the earth at a certain distance from the sun that we would not overheat and we would not uh, freeze to death? Is that God is so competent that when you find yourself in a difficult spot, when you find yourself in a pit, is that He has a strong right hand that He can lift you out of the pit and establish you on a secure, firm rock, which is Himself. He is so competent. If you need peace, He is peace. He is so competent. And so not only is He perfect in character and perfect in competency, He is con- consistently there for you and I. Is that He may change His ways, but He will always be consistent. The book of Hebrews says that He is the same yesterday, today, and forever, that there is none more consistent than God. He he is unchanging in nature, although He may change His ways, His character is the same. His competency is the same. He he doesn't improve on any of those things because He is perfection. And so if God has moved in your past, you can be guaranteed that He can move in your present and He can move then into your future. Because God did something back there is that He can do it again today and He's gonna do it again tomorrow. Tomorrow, when He healed me when I was 15 years of age, I now know at 59 He can heal me again and in the future He can also heal me. He is perfect in character. He is perfect in competency and He will never, ever, ever leave you or forsake you. He is consistent. See, when we trust in God, it's not our reputation at risk, it's His. Would you dive in deep? Would you dive in deep? Would you trust Him completely? There's no risk to trust in God. It's He that will come through. It's He that will answer. It's He that will say no. It's He that will say wait. It's He that will also say yes. My third thought is this, is the names of God are full of promise. I want you to grab a hold of this today. If we know His name, we know His names. We know the promises that are available to us. I have on the screen here just some of those Jehovah names that if you just grab a hold of this, of these names and the meaning of these names, you can put your trust in Him. Is it Jehovah Rohi? The Lord is my shepherd, Psalm 23. Is it David cries out, the, the Lord is my Jehovah Rohi. He, he is my shepherd. He is the one that watches over me. He, he is the one that would leave the 99, 99 and go after the one. Is it you are cared for and you are protected because God is your shepherd. <laughs> Jehovah Jireh. Have you ever been in that place where you didn't know how God was going to provide? It's not just a financial provision. It's a provision right across every aspect and every area of our lives that He is Jehovah Jireh to us that when you are in need, He can answer your need. Jehovah Rapha, He's the Lord who heals. We know here, even this morning as Pastor Chris and as a community believers, we prayed The question was, has anyone felt God move and there were hands that responded? I know that God is a healer. You know that God is a healer. It's not just for the the New Testament church 2,000 years ago. No, He is a healer because of Jesus Christ and by His stripes, we are healed. Jehovah Nissi, the Lord is my banner. He is a God who goes before us. When the enemy comes in like a flood, God would raise up a banner. He will raise up a standard. The the banner, the standard, the flag always went before the army. You have a God that goes before you in the battle. He's your banner today. He's Jehovah Shalom. The Lord who is peace. When your heart and your mind is full of anxiety and fear, He's your peace. He's your peace. As you put your head on the pillow tonight and for those ones that are going through a season of restless sleep and not being able to sleep, that right now I'm prophesying He is Jehovah Shalom. He is your peace. He's your peace. The fullness of His name, Jehovah Shabbat, the Lord of hosts, meaning that He's our captain. And if He's our captain, well then we're part of His army. 
Would you get to know the fullness of who God is, the extent of his name? Because when you know the extent of his name, it's then you can put your total confidence and total trust no matter what life throws at you. My final thought is this, is that the names of God are full of power. They're full of power. It's just not a name. It's a name that's above every other name. His names are powerful. Is his names are prophetic promises for you and I that God will always act upon his promises. His word will never ever return void. The, the words of his name, they're not gonna return void to us. Is that God will always accomplish what he sets out to accomplish. The third commandment that God gives to Moses out of the 10 commandments found in Exodus 20 says this, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. And sometimes we read that and we've heard it said is that, you know, you should not use God's name. You know, when you, you know, hit your thumb with a hammer, you take it in vain, you say it or you, you add another word after his name. It, it, it doesn't mean that at all. Is that this word vain comes from the Hebrew word shav, which means this, it means to be empty, to be false, to be worthless, to be powerless. And God is saying to us, is don't take my name in vain. Don't, don't use my name as though it is empty, as though it is worthless, as though it is powerless. Is that My name is full of power. It is full of worth. It, it's not an empty name, it's a full name. It, it's an overflowing name. It's out of our innermost beings would flow rivers and rivers and rivers of living water. Hey, don't use the name of God and limit it down. Don't dumb down His name. No, it is full of power. It is full of worth. It's fullness today. His name is so, so powerful. Don't take His name in vain. All the way throughout the Word of God for every one of these names that there is a story attached as to how this person found out this facet of God's name and how God came through for him. I, I reminded the story of, Dave, of David as the battle is going on. There is a giant that comes to, out to confront the children of Israel day and night with the same statement and the same saying. You know what? Giants will always come and say the same thing to you. Night and day he came out. And David comes to the battlefield carrying some supplies and he hears this giant calling out and defying the armies of Israel. As the story goes on, David says, I'm gonna go and fight. I'm gonna go and, and slay this giant. And he says these words in 1 Samuel 17. Then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword and a spear and with a javelin. Is it you are coming to me with natural weapons? And then David says, but I, but I am coming to you in the name. Come on, that there is a name that we can come to and defeat the enemy. There, there is a name attached to it. And David says, you're coming to me with natural instruments, but I'm coming to you with a name that's above every other name. I'm coming to you with a name of the Lord of hosts, of, of Jehovah. I'm coming with that name to defeat you and to pull you down. Would you know the name of God? And David says, I'm not coming in any other name. I'm not coming with armour of, of the King. I'm coming in the name of God. And we know the end of the story is he lifts up the giant's head. I wonder what it is that's attacking you day in and day out. I, I wonder what that habit pattern may be around your life that you've prayed and you've surrendered to God, but it's still there. And don't come with a natural means. Be like the heart of David. Say, I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord. I'm coming to you as my captain because I am your fighter. Would you equip me with spiritual weapons to take down the giants that come to oppose and to bring opposition? Philippians 2 and verse 5. And let's just read verse 9. It talks about the greatness of Jesus. In verse 9, it says these words, Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name. And God has given him a name that is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. There is a name that is above every other name, and His name is Jesus. 
And at that name, every knee would bow and every tongue would confess this morning just with every head bowed and every eye closed. Do you know that name? Do you know the power that's in that name? The name of Jesus. There is no name like it. And this morning, Jesus is available to you. It doesn't matter what you have done. It doesn't matter what life has thrown at you. Is that there is a name that's above every other name. I I don't know the name or the label that you're carrying today. Maybe it is fear, maybe it is anxiety, maybe it is, is shame or condemnation. Maybe it's a place of worthlessness, but there is a name that's above every other name. Whatever label may have been placed on you, that that there is freedom in the name of Jesus this morning. And all it simply takes is for a heart to bow and a tongue to confess that He is Lord and the fullness of God now becomes the fullness of your life. As I look across this auditorium, maybe a name has kept you bound. This morning, I, I am saying that there is freedom in the name of Jesus. There is saving grace at the name of Jesus. Maybe mistakes in life have put you in a place of guilt and shame and condemnation, but in that name, He can forgive every one of your sins. He can wipe you totally clean. Wow. Anxiety may be raging in your heart, but He is a God of peace. And so this morning, if there's ones today where you have a name, but you need to overload the name of Jesus and surrender your life to Him, Or maybe there's been ones and you've taken some backward steps in your relationship with God, but this morning you want to engage with that name that's above every other name. And so this morning, just with every head bowed, every eye closed, and those online as well, is I'd love you with every bit of boldness, just lift up your hand and say, hey, Mike, I need Jesus. Would you please pray for me? And so if you're like that in this place today where you want to call upon the name that's above every other name, I'd love you right now just to shoot up your hand and say, would you please pray for me? I I need Jesus Christ. I need Him as my Lord and my Saviour. Would you just lift your hands in this place this morning and online, would you? Thank you so much for that hand over there. Is there others in this place today? Thank you so much for that hand out the back there. I appreciate that as well. Is there others this morning that would join with these ones just to surrender? and say, hey God, I'm all yours today. I'm all in. Thank you so much for that hand right there. I appreciate that. It's a point of surrender. It's a point of contact with the name above all names. And so Heavenly Father, I thank You for Your saving grace today. This is the greatest miracle of all. And for these lives, I thank You. They have been transformed by the power of God, that old things have passed away and today is a new day. And Father, over this journey, Father, I I pray that they would experience and they would know the great depth of Your Name, the height of Your Name, that You're a God that can be called upon because You are perfect in character and You are perfect in competence and You are consistently and reliably there for us. And so, Father, I thank You that they are now born again by the Spirit of God and we give You thanks in Your wonderful, wonderful Name. Let's put our hands together for those ones this morning across this auditorium. Great, great decisions. Amazing. Why don't we stand to our feet today? That there is a name that is above every other name. And this morning, I want to let you know you don't have to memorise all those different names. Because that last verse we read said these words, that He has been given a name that's above every other name, that in the name of Jesus is all of those names. (laughs) all of those names. Would you know the depth and the breadth and the width and the height of that name that's above every other name, the name of Jesus. And so Father, over this community today, we thank You for Your great love. We thank You for Your great affection for us. And Father, as we prayed multiple times today over lives, that Father, right now we pray for healing. We pray for salvation of loved ones. We thank You for freedom over mindsets as ones put their head on the pillow tonight that they will sleep where they haven't slept for months. And we give You thanks for that, Lord Jesus. And as we go out of this place, Father, that everything we do this week would bring glory and honour to the Name that's above every other Name. And we give You thanks and praise in Your wonderful Name. Let's lift up our voices this morning.